But I feel like this week has been a rather eventful week, specifically in the music industry, with like a lot of artists coming out to express dissatisfaction with their respective record labels. And music fans, specifically on Twitter, have been taking sides, some on the side of the artists, some on the side of the record labels. Uh-huh. What do you think about that? You know, you know, it is that, first of all, like, the thing with stands in, they cannot help not take a side. <laughs> It's like it's like you do or die fear for them. They mm-hmm. have to be on either side of the divide, and mm-hmm. it just doesn't make any sense. Because at the end of the day, you need to be able to contextualize things as an adult, to be able to know there are nuances to this. It's not just black and white. But in the Nigerian music industry, especially with the fans, you see that this is all that. So there's there's no there's no in between with them. So that's why we see people who drag this person when if they contextualize that issue they'll see that okay maybe i should have a different opinion, opinion than on one i'm sharing so that's that's what it is with them and we don't know if it, if that is ever going to change to be honest all right so we know one thing is contracts that bind the artists and the record label mm-hmm. so why do you think artists try to break their contracts with record labels okay now so the thing is artists they get to a point in their career right where they start feeling that okay i can do this alone <laughs> where they start getting big money fame and this money and fame start getting to them and they start feeling that okay maybe the relationship is not working like it's not fair like i'm making this much money and i'm getting this cut from that money i'm making it doesn't make sense mm. to me they start, they start feeling that that way now so an artist when they get signed to a level they can sign maybe a 70 30 deal right that cuts across that cuts across everything uh, merge live performances endorsement you know sinking stuff like mm-hmm. that and and the artists start pumping the money pumping in serious money to prop up these artists to get them to scale then investments start paying up now you know people they start getting shows they start getting booked they start making money they're a couple of millions a couple of millions there and they start feeling man this 30k is not it's not doing it for me man <laughs> like it's not doing it for me they start feeling that way that's the primary reason artists and labor relationship usually it's a stomping block that's the major reason mm-hmm. it has to always do with monetary the money money is always yeah, the... it's always money mostly money but that's not that's not that's not all the other reasons you know sometimes it's just a label and an artist are just not a good fit mm. they just don't work out like the the policy of the label just doesn't tally with the direction of the, the artist, artist the yeah. brand of the artist you grab so the artist just feel like i'm not making progress here i just i need to walk away mm. then the label just feel okay i don't think we want to let you go you understand? So it just sometimes it's from the side of the artist, for some sometimes on part of, part the, of label. the label. But most times it's always an, a money of uh, an issue of money. Mm. Yeah. All right. So now that we've established why artists try, it's always money. Oh, money, go, go. Like I want yeah, to. <laughs> I'm making hundred million for this label. Why am I getting sixty? I but I, I mean, I understand the side of the artists. At the same time, I understand the side of the record label because yeah. they're pumping in money to of course, I mean, get these artists. Yeah, they won't bring back their money. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. As they should. Yeah. It's a business after all. Uh, you're right. All right. All right. So do you think it's... Now Now we, we know that they do break this contract. Do yeah. you think it is fair though? On the, you think it's fair to the record labels that they break this... Uh, that the artists break their contract. Yeah, right? do you think it's so fair? This is that there's no absolute answer to this. You understand? Like mm-hmm. there's no yes or no. Mm. So... That is it. As, as it is not fair on the side of the artist sometimes it's also not fair on the part of the label sometimes now it is not fair on the part of an artist whom there's a lot of investment being put into like an art a label invested upwards of 50 million close to 100 sometimes excess of 200 million on you mm. for you to reach the level you are then you get to that level mm. and it's time for this label to recoup their investment from shows from endorsement from the deal you signed with them and that deal that motivated them to spend that money on you they started feeling some type of way that okay i'm big now i don't want to share my money uh i can do this alone the fame you start leveraging your fame and success mm. and you start manipulating the label and putting out false news that this label they are, they are trying to scam you they're not supporting you this and that that's why you see artists a lot of artists who are signed go around parading themselves as independent artists you sign mm. you sign a 360 deal that cuts across merch endorsements live shows and even though they are distributing for you a distribution as well so it's not just a distribu- distribution deal it's a 360 deal but sometimes they'll be there priding themselves as, as, a, independent, as an independent artist artists because they want to give that perception of that i did it on my own self-made yeah self-made i feel it kind of like makes the success feels sweeter mm-hmm. makes you get more respect so it is not fair on the part of the artist to want to break a contract when the, at the label should be recouping an investment you understand mm-hmm. it just shouldn't be like that at the same time it's not fair on the part of the label to want to stop an artist from leaving if they are not helping the artist's career mm. i mean an artist has been with you he's not making progress 
you've not really spent the kind of money required for that just to make progress i mean we're in nigeria in the nigerian music industry right now you need to spend a ridiculous amount of money for to break an artist a lot a lot of zeros you need to spend hmm. and you do not have the money to you know to fund that artist um maybe the artist kind of i found someone else who is willing to pump that money to their career then you now said no you're not going to leave this doesn't make any sense for mm-hmm. the artists yeah. so the artists would kind of feel obligated to break their contract for their own good so there's no you know it's not there's no it's not, it's not black and white seeker. yeah there's no there's yeah it's not black and white it goes it swings both ways mm. so by the end of the day whoever is not being reasonable is not being is being unfair on the other party that's what's up so it could be on the parts of the record label it could be on the, the part, part of the, of the artist, artist regardless yeah. all right uh you, you spoke a little bit about you know not putting enough into these artists for them to reach the heights that they should yeah, be at yeah. who do you think do you think the record labels are responsible if the artist is quote unquote failed yeah yeah you, you see like uh this week now you see a lot of people calling out record label bosses ah oh, back to back yeah, back to that, like slandering them and telling them saying things like oh they tried to tap that one's career they didn't support this one's career and the artists themselves are participants in this they mm-hmm. kind of fuel this narrative themselves yep. and sell it to the fans that oh well i was while i was under this particular label this particular person didn't do what he's supposed to do for me this particular person didn't support me the way he supported that person mm. so they sell this narrative and people buy it the fans buy it and they blame the, the label bosses i mean so now what we have to understand is that a label boss right a label boss is like the is like the president of a country or like the government of a state when their policies do not work or when their ministries when the ministry under them fails that failure falls at their feet mm. it's on their table so they have to take a blame for it it's like a kind of something like a let's say collective responsibility kind of yep. argument, right so they get blamed for it and that's why you see fans say something like uh if this particular artist was signed to this particular label we mm, would have gone far yeah I hear even that. though those people might not know the kind of work that particular label or the label boss and the team are put it in yeah, they have put into that artist and sometimes it just doesn't work like all beats all you've done you try your best you know, you spend money you get the right collaborations you, you get the right cosigns you put out the right music even at the right time and it still just doesn't work so it's a gamble basically yes i mean yeah we could say that it's like a 50 50 things but if you do the right thing i think it may kind of like edges your chances higher right mm-hmm. so sometimes you do all these things and it doesn't work and that's why the label bosses and the labels get blamed for it so now is it fair that the label bosses get blamed for it maybe not entirely not fair but it's not unfair either mm-hmm. because how do you quantify the success of a label or a label boss it is by the amount uh, of artists is, that, that they have produced that have been successful. Uh, so when your label boss, when your artists under you are successful, you as a label boss, you have success. The biggest labels in the world, the biggest, the most revered and the most celebrated label bosses in the world are the successful ones. The ones who have successfully artists, broken yeah. artists year after year True. and taking them to the top, right? So when you're not able to do this, people people would normally say oh you're not putting in yeah you're not not putting in the work they'll blame me for it and if we should borrow from the words of odogo himself who said like explain 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 explain." you know no no evidence evidence. yeah (laughs) true (laughs) so maybe there's no day my brother you would like to know the work true even though though you're putting the work you understand so so that's why they blame them Mm. so they blame them and and it's not fair sometimes it's not fair because sometimes the artists themselves the label put in the work, the artists do their part, and the label do their part, the label well, the artists don't do, their do part, the part. And the artists refuse to do their part. Mm. An artist will go, around, go on and put a song at the wrong, he release the wrong song at the, the wrong, wrong time. time. An artist will go on to experiment when his career is not a point of experimentation. And when you experiment, there are logical consequences for experimentation. Yep. And you should be able to be ready to face that consequence. Sure. You understand? So yeah. when you put out a song that's an outlier, a song that would not normally do well in the current circumstances, and the song logically does not do well people start blaming the label, label like you didn't promote especially well when, yeah especially when the label do not have creative control to an extent sometimes the label will tell an artist please don't drop the song this song will work now the artist will threaten to leak that song and the label will let them drop it and it doesn't work and, it, and people will now turn around to blame the label because they don't have adequate information true sure. but as i said a label boss like a president like a governor the failure of your ministry the failure of your department is going to fall at your feet hmm. 
Uh, he spoke really profoundly because a lot of people, the fans don't necessarily see what's going on at, all. at the background. At all. They just look for someone to blame and they pounce and you know, on the you person. Know what's crazy about it? What's even crazy is that they take the words of the artist for what it is. Because these labels normally don't come out and yes. say, oh, these are bad, these are narratives. It's a company they after they all. They don't, go that, they don't go out to say that. Except push comes to shore. They yeah. don't have to come out and say, oh, this is the role you play. That's the role you play. This is the role we play. But most times, this artist is just saying, no, this is what it is. This is what they did to me. This is why they didn't support me. And the fans will just go with it because the artist is the famous person. He's the one that has the social currency to push the narrative. True. Yeah. I get that. So why do you think artists feel the need to set up their record labels? Because many times when he gets signed in, they're like, oh, welcome to the family. So when something happens now, everyone is throwing anybody under the bus. Family, 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 family. Yes. Shout out to EQ, man. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you mentioned family, maybe remember the diesel. Yeah. yeah the family goes but, through a lot yeah. sometimes. It's all about stronger. Family. But sadly, some people can't come out stronger. Family break, break, break up, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, artists, why, why do artists feel the need to set up their own level? It's very common now. It's very common after this. I think number one, which is not entirely in the responsive board, I just like to point out, like, I think in Afrobe right now, in Nigerian music, yeah. we just we just begin to have like really solid labels. Before we just had like five OG labels. Yeah. Like, like, Understand? So there's no that strong foundation where there's a label that's been around for 40 years where you cannot just like jump ship. Like label the label foundation is beautiful, it's strong. There's not we don't have that culture. So artists just feel they need that. Come on, if you can do this shit in four years, why can't I? With, with all my fame, with all my 20 million followers on IG and Twitter, why can I not just go and set up my own shop, right? So that's part of it. But the primary reason is that I just get to a point in their career where they start feeling, man, whatever you do for me, I can do I for myself. For myself. Mm. You understand? I can do for myself. And that's the issue because they, 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 can, they, they mostly feel that way when a particular label is not strong. They don't feel that label is strong enough. I don't think the biggest artist in the world internationally assigned to majors yeah assigned to label yeah i know the the adele the taylor swift go so so you don't you don't like you don't necessarily see them feeling like whatever that particular label can do for them they can do for themselves but yeah in nigeria where the ecosystem is not really strong you see an artist who just had like five eight songs <laughs> an album and had one year run you know one year or two year run of, of strong yeah. or strong fame we we'll go around thinking whatever you've done for me i can do, do myself, myself now because now even me they make this label shine I mean, they carry this label take all the back. credit for the work that yeah. was put into I it mean, it's not necessarily wrong that it's the artist that is putting the label on the on the, in the spotlight but the label put me a lot of work for you to get to that spotlight so they, start, they get to a point where they feel i can do this for myself i'm big enough to go set up shop and they, and they go open, set up shop so now most of these artists that live in that lives label some of them don't even achieve success because they're just delusional they don't understand the amount of work that go into running the label and you don't have the work ethic to put in that work. They don't mm-hmm. even have the, the sobriety, the level of headedness to pick the right team. I know? like that word sobriety. Yeah, to, to pick the right team to actually to run a label. So they just feel like, oh, I have my manager, I have my road manager, maybe I need to get a publicist. Yeah, PR. And, and PR and one, that's all. One, one, one person. Yeah, 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 you know, put up a two, my three man team, which can work if you guys are really ready to, to do, put in the work. Would it work? Most time they won't. They yeah. also you you leave a label and you go set up shop on you and you don't even achieve success. But some have been able to do it. Mm-hmm. You have some people who've left major labels in Nigeria and they've been able to do very, very well on their own. Mm. So it is it is depend it depends. Social currency comes into play, uh your your talent comes into play, even goodwill comes into play. Yeah, come, I wouldn't say luck. Yeah, luck just... comes into play, goodwill comes into play. So but the major reason artists feel they need to leave a label and breach their contract and go even or maybe not renew their contract contract and go set up shop is because they feel they're big enough to, to go stand do it themselves. To see themselves right and now they go fixed when they when you leave when you walk away from a label structure you leave that structure and you have to go and recreate that structure and sometimes they don't have the capacity to recreate that structure right mm-hmm. so even sometimes when you do not some people are successful and mostly the unsuccessful ones are the ones that have a lot to say about the labels they left and be like, ah, these people didn't support me. This people support me. But you don't leave them now. Now you have left the labor. Why are you not successful? So, right. so you see them, you see people coming to see and they have a lot to say about people like like Badu and Don Jazzy that they didn't do this, they didn't do that. He had some misguided stance would go around seeing saying silly things about these guys, like saying things about Badu and Don Jazzy. Like what determines the success of a label boss is the amount of success he's had with his artists. Someone like Don Jazzy has had success in three different 
evolution and stages of Afrobeat. Mm-hmm. From the Moist times of the band to the Mavis times of them Tiwa Savage. Now he's doing it with Rema and Ira Star. Impressive work. Is that that is success. That's you don't you don't, you don't get you more successful that. than that. You can't argue that. No, no matter what anybody wants to say about it, say that your your career wasn't supported at some point, Don Jazzy is a ridiculously successful label boss. And mm-hmm. the same thing with Bado. Mm-hmm. Bado has broken several artists, gotten artists to reach the top. Look at Ashake, twenty months or two. See. And you now have you now have a lot to see. Yeah, maybe in the early days of Af- of YBN, there maybe there were some things that weren't were when that they were not in place. In place. Well, they were not in place. Maybe structure was not strong enough. Yeah. But at the same time, even at those early days, we had Lil Cash, we had AG, you know, we had we had Victor, we had people that enjoyed mo- moderate level of success, and even beyond moderate level of success, we had people who've come out of that labels, people affiliated with that labels who have been successful. Mm-hmm. We had people who just by those co-sign alone, just up on a song yeah. and took their career from zero to 50, zero to 100. Yeah. You cannot look those people in the face and say they're not successful. So you cannot say people like someone like, you cannot say someone like Bado. Mm-hmm. Oh, Don Jazzy is not a good label boss because because one artist from the, that they used to be signed to them didn't enjoy the level of success they hope to enjoy. Because at the end of the day, you look at the number of artists that have come out of those pipelines mm-hmm. and the success they have enjoyed, and yep. it speaks for itself. Those facts speaks for itself. Starts you look at the people they have co-signed, the people whose career they have supported, and the level they have gotten into, and it speaks for themselves. So at the end of the day, right, if you are going to leave a label, and you are going to go set up shop. Be sure, be, be, be damn sure where you are successful at it. And if you are not focused on successful at it, then you shouldn't have the most, the most, the most to see about the label you left. But that's that's what's up. People just don't have the self awareness to appreciate facts, right? Mm-hmm. They like to point fingers, which is the easiest thing to do. True. It's very easy to point fingers, especially when you're not successful. If you are successful, you don't point fingers now. You take all the credit. Is this yeah. the motherfucking text I get? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this the motherfucking text I get? If you're successful. If you're not yeah. successful, you're like, ah. You it's just say, oh, it's your fault. Nah, you do am. Nah, you do am. So right. that's what's up. All right. So the last question I have for you, uh, we have to reach a resolve at some point, right? So what are the best ways to resolve these label artists? What do you think is a way forward to have a more uh, positive label, label artist relationship. I really, I really, really love that word, that positive. Yeah. Because now, like a label artist relationship or disagreement, mm-hmm. be it as it may, is contractual in nature. It's like True. every other contractual relationship. True. There's an offer, there's an acceptance, there's a consideration, and there's a breach of contract. So you can fo- seek remedies the way others will seek remedies in a breach of contract. It's not a do or die affair. Nobody needs to be chasing anyone around the city. Nobody needs to feel unsafe because they left a label. It's not necessary. We've seen labels go to court to stop an artist from dropping music. Wow. For a long time, for an extended period of time, over the label disagreement. We've seen label and artists go to court different times. If you cannot reach a, an amicable settlement, right? If you cannot reach an amicable settlement where both of you come to the table and reach a settlement that moves both passes forward. You, yeah, you move on your career, you move on your career, you do some, you do that. Then, then go to court. Go to court. Don't that's, chase that's people. Don't yeah. Don't chase each other around. Don't chase, chase each other around the city. With we, we don't don't don't. I mean, don't make it look like it's a do or die affair. Don't paint the entire industry bad. Don't make people start thinking about like it does it go beyond the music. Mm-hmm. If, if things are not going well, if if it's the label that wrong, you go to court. If you cannot settle it amicably, if the artist that are, are wrong, you go to court. If you cannot settle, settle it amicably, there's precedence there that that people get justice at least to an extent. No matter how undesirable it might be, right? No matter how we don't want it, no matter how it is, we try to avoid it. Contractual issues would always arrive. True. So try to resolve it reasonably. It might not be amicable. You can go to court, yeah, because a court settlement. You probably say, I can law courts, like you don't go to court and come back and be friends, but it's court. <laughs> let the law decide, right? If you cannot decide as friends, let the law decide, yeah, but let it be reasonable, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's contract, it's a civil matter, it's not a do or die affair. So, artist relationship, liberal relationship, a breach of contract, if it cannot be reasonable, if it cannot be amicably resolved, it must be reasonably resolved, sure. because it's not a do or die affair, and that's facts only.